Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our fall raindrops project. We have Keenan here working the cameras. Hello, thank you. And we are going to be doing this project in six steps. So our very first step is I'm going to call it a sketch, a wash, and a lift. So we're going to sketch our raindrops, we're going to do a wash, and then we're going to lift up um, the wash over the raindrops. Second step is we are going to do our wet un and wet background here, this kind of out of focus foliage. Um, our third step is we will start to put in the medium values on our raindrops. Our fourth step is we will focus on the raindrops that go over the foliage. Our fifth step is we will put in our dark values on our raindrops. And our sixth, sixth step is just any finishing details. We are using four uh, paint brushes for this project. We have our one inch wash, we have our round 12, we have a round six, and we have a round two. Now, of course, we encourage you to use what you have. So if you don't have these exact brushes, that's all right, do it anyway. We are using three colors for this project. And I'm just gonna do this because we're not using that one. Mm. We are using tiger orange, space blue, and Payne's gray. Maybe I should also block those. These, these are the colors also, that we're using. Also not these. <laughs> also not these over here. <laughs> um, I am using our Let's Make Art watercolor paper, which comes in the kits in the box. I'm using Holbein soft tape to tape off my edges, which is my favorite tape. It's the best. Um, I think that's all the supplies. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, we are going to do our oath and then we will start painting. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you, Keenan. Welcome. Okay. Now I just want to acknowledge this project is hard. If this is your very first time painting watercolor, I would maybe suggest starting with another tutorial because this is really hard. Um, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good disclaimer. <laughs> I just need to acknowledge it. Um, but if this is, uh, if you're still here after I said that and you're like, I'm a beginner, but I'm going to do this anyway, welcome. You're a rebel and I appreciate you. <laughs> And you, you are my people, so let's do this. Way to be. <laughs> Way to be. We're just going to go for it. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to lightly sketch um, some organic shapes on my paper to act as my ra raindrops. Now, I just want to acknowledge that we're mostly doing like the bigger ones here. I have a lot of little ones, but those I actually don't sketch in. I paint those in later. So... We're kind of just going to do bigger raindrops throughout. Should I do them darker so you guys can see? They don't look bad, but yeah, that might be a okay. good idea. I'll do them darker. You guys try and do them as light on your um, paper as possible because watercolor is transparent. So every so often, a roundish raindrop. Now we have done a raindrop tutorial before. It was kind of like a rainbow background, but in that tutorial, I specifically go over how to, in detail, how to do like a three-dimensional raindrop, like a single raindrop. So if you want to refer to that before starting this one, feel free to, um, but you don't have to. I just wanted to say that I'm not going to go into quite as much detail on a single one. So if you want that reference, please go ahead and watch that other tutorial or at least the beginning of it. That's good. That's all we need. Okay. And then I'm going to talk through step one and two before I do it because we've got to work quick. So I want to give you guys a heads up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet my entire paper using water and then I'm going to drop in kind of like a light gray blue color for my like sky. And then while it's wet, I'm going to lift up using a paper towel over my raindrops because our raindrops, we want to keep white as white as we possibly can because we want to make sure that there's a highlight still on there. Um, 
And then while the paper is still wet, after I've lifted up the raindrops, I drop in the foliage or like the green landscape part and let that bleed out. And then I lift again from the raindrops. So another thing that you can use if you have it is like masking fluid would be great. Or like a, I use a Pabio drawing gum pen. Um, essentially it's like glue that you mask off to keep some areas white while you paint other areas. So you can use that or you can just do what we're doing and see how it goes. Okay. I like that plan. Me too. That's in the rebel plan. We're rebels here. Yeah. I'm gonna lightly er erase my raindrops. Um, Cause if your raindrops have a really dark outline around the whole thing, it's gonna kind of flatten it. And just so you know, raindrops are kind of like, they're roundish usually, but they're not like perfect, the same size, the same circles, everything. So make sure you have variation. Okay, I'm going to use my one inch wash to do my water. And then I'm actually gonna mix some colors on my palette so that way I can just jump straight into adding the color. So for the background, I'm gonna grab a little bit of space blue and a little bit of Payne's gray. And it's gonna get kind of like this grayish desaturated blue. And then I'm gonna add water to it. Maybe a little bit more blue. And you guys can decide how blue you want your sky to be, how gray you want it to be, how dark you want it to be. This is your painting. And then I'm gonna mix um, a green. So I'm gonna take my space blue and I'm gonna take my yellow here. And then I like doing it in the middle because then I can pull from the blue or I can pull from the yellow. And then I have three different greens going on. Initially, I thought you said you can decide how great you want your painting to be. <laughs> <laughs> I would not say that because that is pressure. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to make sure I have a piece of paper towel ready to go. All right, you guys, we gotta work quick. This is fast work. This is fast work, let's do it. On Take the a clock. deep breath and go. Just water. And the pressure's on. Pressure's on, it's gonna be fine. Okay, so now it's nice and wet. And if you wanna use your one inch wash, you can. If you wanna move to your 12, you can. Whatever you feel more comfortable doing. And then I'm just gonna start adding this kind of grayish blue wash. And I'm just doing the top two thirds. I'm not gonna go over the ground. And you can see it's a barely there color. Yeah. I'm not going too dark here. Okay. And now I'm going to lift. Oh, was there red on my? Finger. It's on your oh, finger. It's on my finger. Your finger is the culprit. My finger. That's all right. I'm just going to keep going. That fits well with the Batman theme you have going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we're still working quickly, guys. And if your paper is wet, I mean, has it... If <laughs> <laughs> if your paper has dried at this point, especially the bottom, just re-wet it. Okay, now I'm gonna take my green and just, and I'm gonna try and work around the raindrops when I can, but because this is wet on wet, um, it's even if I avoid it, the raindrops, they're gonna go in there a bit. So just like do what you can and try and make your values nice and dark, especially in some of the areas. But as you can see, this is just kind of like bleeding out and kind of doing its own thing. And that's okay. That's kind of what we want because what we're going for here is like, if we were the photographer taking a picture, we're pretending like the focus is on the raindrops on the window or the windshield. And then, so that makes the background fuzzy. And the secret to this, to keeping it fuzzy, is after you put in this wash, don't touch it. 
Like we want to keep these edges fuzzy. Mm. And then now, I'm going to move just that bit of color around. Now I'm going to try and lift out where I had some water drops. And if you're not able to get the whole thing lifted out, that's not the end of the world because only really a section of the raindrop is highlighted. So as long as you have like a good white area, then you'll be okay. And then let's do one, even if there's not, like sometimes I like to create ones if I'm like, actually, I feel like there should be a raindrop here. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit more. But as you can see, the longer it dries, it's a little bit harder to lift. So do what you can, save what you can. And I really, really want to put more dark over here. Let's just do it. I don't know if it'll work because it's been drying for a bit and I don't want any hard edges, but I just felt like there needed to be. Some darkness. Mm. I was born in the darkness. What'd you say? It's one of the Batman movies. <laughs> Okay, and I want to call attention to the fact that like I am not stressing about how this horizon line or land line or foliage line looks because no matter what, the focus is not on that. The focus is on the water drops. So just the fact that like there'll be out of focus greenery in the background, our mind is gonna say, oh, that's land. And it's not gonna be like, is there really a tree shaped that way? You know what I mean? Yeah, no one's gonna say that. No one's gonna say no. that. Except maybe Keenan though. I mean, I'm like, have you seen a tree like that? <laughs> so what even is this? <laughs> and also when there are lots of overgrown areas, um, like, trees and bushes and things like that, like on top of each other, they make some really wonky, weird shapes. So like, don't stress too much. When I re-wet my area, you can kind of see it created a bloom right here. Do you guys mm. remember when I re -wet? So I'm just lifting a little bit of that hard edge out while it's damp. It won't totally erase it, but then it won't be as dark. Well, that was step. One and two. Whoa. Now we gotta let this dry. Mm. You wanna make sure you let it dry. Nice and crispy. Nice and good. <laughs> Put it in the oven. Put it in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> Another um, thing that you can use if, especially in this area, like the dark foliage part, if you don't have a masking fluid pen and if your highlights like your raindrops got kind of eaten up by the green color. If you have bleed proof white, you're good. <laughs> Just do some bleed proof white on there. Ooh. And bleed proof white is essentially gouache. So if you have white gouache, that'll work. You can use white acrylic paint, but I find it not as smooth as gouache or water or bleed proof white. Hmm. And we want our raindrops smooth. We want them nice and smooth. I should have tried to do green around here to like cover that little red part that I left from my finger. But honestly, I think at the end of it, you won't be able to see it that much. So it'll be fine. Now, if you look at this reference photo, I want to call attention to two things. The raindrops over the sky area and the raindrops over the foliage area are different. And that is because when water is over, how do I say this? When I was looking at 
a bunch of different reference photos on how to do this project, I noticed that when there was raindrops over scenes, it actually inverted the image itself. So if you look at these raindrops, the sky is at the bottom and the foliage is at the top. What? <laughs> so you see that? Yes, but, now I see that. Yes, but on the sky area, they were just kind of like the oh, gray values. Oh my goodness. I, that's awesome. So I, th and I, uh, but you only, you have to separate it out. So when it's doing that, that's when you flip it, but here you keep it. Because if you try and do a dark green up here, that's gonna make the raindrops seem a little bit funky. And if you keep these ones down here only white, that's gonna make them seem separate from like not as transparent, you know what I mean? Because water is water, it's transparent and so is a window, but that water causes it to invert. Um, so that's what's going on down here. What? Okay. So we're approaching these raindrops in two different ways. The top ones, we're just gonna use different gray values. The bottom ones, we're gonna actually use green. That's awesome. <sighs> I got really excited about that. <laughs> Well, it's actually kind of funny because like that information is always there. But the first time that I painted raindrops and I was looking at reference photos, I didn't catch that. And then this last time as I was looking through them and I was just like, wait a second, wait a second. I'm like, it's just the scene, but inverted on those water drops. And I'm like, okay, now I know what colors to use. Like it just, it, it's funny how our brain doesn't make things click right away until we're like actually looking at what it is that we're seeing. It's the same thing with water reflections actually. If you look at water reflections, our brain just goes water and like doesn't move. But if you, if you look at the water as if it's not water, you see that you, most of the time, it's almost a mirror reflection of what's happening right around it. And that blows your mind when you see it, when you're like, oh, that's a building and that's a tree and that's this and that's this, you know what I mean? So same idea. Weird. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting in my medium values. I still have this kind of gray color that I use for the background. I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more I'm working around the green that I put in there. And I'm just going to kind of start at the top of my raindrop using that medium value. And then I add water. And I wanna make sure my brush is without color. Okay, and then you just kind of blend it down. So we have a value change within this water drop goes from a medium value to a light value. And if you can work quickly, you can do like a couple medium values at a time and then blend them out. You just want to be able to work quickly because um, it's harder to blend color out the more you let it dry like this one, I let it dry too long. See how it's not moving as much? Mm -hmm. I'm using my two for this because I'm working fairly small. And if you can, as you're blending out, try and leave the very bottom of your water drop a white color. This one I didn't do as good of a job. You see that? You see how I didn't leave that like a, a highlight? There's a big difference between those two. Yeah, so um, it's not the end of the world if you blend all the way to the bottom, but if you can, try and only blend like two thirds of the way to leave a nice white highlight along the bottom of the water drop.
And then at this point, this is where I start to put in a little bit of the like smaller ones. So these smaller ones, because they're so tiny and we're working small, you don't have to have the full range of the value transitions to convince the viewer of dimensionality. So I'm just gonna go in and think about like a circle shape and do kind of like a little bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top using this medium value. But you see how that's kind of creating that feeling of a little flicked, tiny, tiny bit of water. Yep. But we don't have to um, like do the whole song and dance like we're doing with these bigger ones. And notice that I'm not just doing a circle. I'm kind of going along the bottom and maybe a little swoop along the top. Mm. Like these to me feel more dimensional than this guy. Man, that's cool. And also sometimes the water drops are so tiny that it's just even a dot. But maybe that might be too dark, so lift. There we go. And it's at this point where while you're painting it, you're probably like, what's happening? But if you were to step back from your painting a little bit, like I can see the overhead camera. So like at this point, I'm looking at the overhead camera screen and I'm going, okay, we got some water drops going on. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely got some movement going on. And also sometimes like water drops kind of like move down, you know, like drag a little bit. Shimmy. Shimmy down. <laughs> <laughs> so you can add a couple of that in there. A couple of shimmy, shimmy water drops. Notice that your brain is gonna wanna make the same shapes over and over again in the same size. So you gotta purposely say, no brain, be quiet. Stop trying to make my life easy. <laughs> Don't think. <laughs> Stop thinking. Don't process. <laughs> How dare you. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is using that same medium value, the water drops where I did do a color transition, I'm gonna go underneath the water drop where there was um, like around the highlight and just kind of do a little bit of a shadow there. Hmm. Wow. And I'm using a medium value and I'm gonna try not to blend it out. The reason why I'm not gonna blend it out is the last time I taught how to do water drops, we did blend out that shadow, but I noticed that that actually, for the most part, created a bloom or actually sometimes lifted the color out or made it like way darker than it needed to be around that water drop where I was just like, you know, I wonder if I could just go in and do a little, a small shadow that doesn't need to be blended out so then it doesn't create like funkiness around the water drop. You see what I'm saying? I think so. Because when I would go, so I would had, I had us put a shadow in and then use water to blend it out. But sometimes just adding that new addition of water to it created a bloom, which then negated the shadow. Got it. And I noticed that on my own where I was just like, actually, I'm not sure if that was as helpful information. So what if we try it this way? Hmm. 
Okay, can we talk about how they already have a little bit of a dimen dimension? Oh. <laughs> I mean, they've already left the paper. Yeah, they're... We got, we got water drops on our, on our hands, people. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do the water drops in my green area. And by try, I'm saying try because this is tricky. It's tricky for me and I've been painting a long time. So I just wanted to acknowledge that if you're having difficulties, so am I, but I think that we get better by, you know, challenging ourselves. So let's do it and let's just see how it goes. When I do my shadows on this, I wanna make sure I grab a nice dark green. Um, but it's much harder to transition from a dark green to a white than it is from a medium value to a medium gray to a white. So like, let's move slowly, thoughtfully. It's gonna be okay. So I'm mixing a dark green or you can, or if you still have some on your palette. And then I basically have to like shape some of these. So if you gotta paint over the green areas on some of the tops of these, that's okay because it's gonna be a darker value anyway. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush and transition to my highlight. But it's, we're working, like trying to do value transitions in small areas is hard. I need to acknowledge that. So if you're having a hard time, that's okay. Smooth it out, transition it out. And you'll notice that if I get too close to the bottom, instead of keeping my brush movement going down, I actually have it going the other way because whatever direction you're painting your brush, paint is gonna go that way. So if I wanna leave the bottom white, then I'll actually start blending towards the top. Um, so then I can leave that white portion alone. So again, you wanna use greens that are the same color as your foliage because it's the reflected, the inverted image of it. And then this guy here, I'm gonna do it up here because it's going right along that line. Hmm. I feel like I need to add a little bit of yellow to make it like a warmer green to kind of match the foliage a little bit better. high enough up there that I don't need to touch that one, but I think this one right here. That one looks cool. That might be my favorite raindrop. This one? Yeah. Got this guy. So the interesting thing about raindrops or water is two things greatly affect where the highlights and shadows are. One is the light. Where is the light source coming from? And the other is actually what's around it. You know, because like if this green foliage wasn't around these this water, I wouldn't be putting green foliage within it. So water reflect like 
light informs it just the same as any other object, but also the scene around it usually af uh, affects how the values interact within that water drop because you'll get you know, the reflection of what's around it too. And that's true for colors as well as the values of the lights and the shadows. Now, admittedly, I would say that the water drops along the green area are a little bit trickier to define, but my hope is like sometimes the the other things happening in your painting can carry the rest of it. So I, my hope is that we, it's so obvious that there are water drops up here. And then if we just kind of continue that same kind of movement down there, it carries the bottom for us. Does that make sense? Mm, yep. It does the heavy lifting. It does. This part is going to do the heavy lifting for us of really communicating that those water drops. Interesting. Because if you were to just like cover this, well, that's distracting. So many. <laughs> like, can you totally tell that those are water drops? Not, to not totally, if I'm being honest. Yeah, no. But that. Oh, snap. Oh, you totally can. So then it's just like, this is really going to help us in this area. Yeah. That's cool. And I don't, I don't know, I don't use that as like, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it's a bad thing to let some like easier or more obvious areas help us. I take all the help I can get, you know? It's like, thank you. Thank you, gray water drops for carrying my funky green ones start writing some letters to the for the thank you notes <laughs> we should that'd be funny <laughs> that would be funny and then once i do this kind of like value transition on these bigger drops that's when i can go in and kind of do a similar thing on the green portion as I did up here with the smaller ones. So you wanna continue that through. Now this kind of like medium dark value, small water drop rough outlines that we're doing, they're not gonna show up as well on the um, like really dark value areas as on like the light value areas, but that's okay. Let's still put them in. And this is where like doing a little, like especially on these smaller ones down here, doing a tiny swoop of like little bleed proof white at the very bottom can really make those pop. I feel like they do a pretty decent job communicating raindrops without it on this. But if you have it, why not use tools that you think would um, help with dimensionality, you know? Isn't that funny? That's super cool. Like these little raindrops, I feel like are the true star of this project. You got the heavy lifters and then the stars. Yeah. The baby raindrops are the stars. Baby raindrops are where it's at. I just feel like they do so much. And then on the like bigger raindrops, we can go in and kind of put a shadow in underneath our highlight. As well as the little guys around it. I 
I like looking at this one on the on the side cam. Yeah? Yeah, it's, it's like... Oh, cool. It just looks cool. Yeah, it does look cool. So the reason why we want to put kind of this shadow behind these larger ones is that's how we show that this is popping off of the surface. That is really what gives it, it's kind of like, oh, feel, you know? I do. <laughs> <laughs> And I wonder, I'm gonna try something. I'm just curious, I just had an idea and I wonder if it would help. So like on these dark value areas, it's actually interesting because on these medium value greens, I feel like these little small raindrops really pop, right? Here though, even though I put just as many, they're not as visible because we're painting on a darker value and we need a lighter value to make them pop. So I'm gonna see if what it would be like if I just drop some water on some of these, on some of these. Just, and let that soak for a second and then lift to see if I can get a little bit of color lifted to really put just a tiny bit of a highlight in there. This is actually how the reference photo was taken. You did the outlines of the raindrops <laughs> and then just dropped water there. I actually just did water drops. I took <laughs> yeah. a spray bottle, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, there we go. Look oh, at that. nice. Look at that. Oh, wow. Cool, okay, so then in any of these really dark value areas where you're like, I really want a little bit of a highlight in there, go ahead and drop in a tiny bit of water, let that soak for a second, and then we'll lift it out. And then don't forget where you put the drops I know, of water. <laughs> but, um, how I actually check to see if there's like wet areas on my painting is I look at it from an extreme angle because the glare of the water will catch the light. So that's how I actually can see where I put stuff. Okay. Okay. I just feel like it does just a little bit of a pop out from there, which is nice. But you gotta let it dry for a second before you go back and put like shadows and stuff on it. So we're just gonna leave those areas alone. Keep working over here. And while those are still drying, I'm gonna go back to my gray dots and I'm gonna put in my darkest values. So far we've just been working in medium values and we need to put in our darkest value to really make that stand out and pop. So I'm gonna mix more of my space blue with my Payne's gray to get a darker value. And then kind of like along the bottom there. And then if you wanna do, it depends, maybe some of them will need it, some of them won't. But one more little swoop along the top Look at that raindrop, Just water drop. sitting there. Ba-bam. So just go in with kind of like this dark value. And it's, th this is where it gets tricky though with your values is you want to have it dark enough that it makes it pop, but you don't want it so dark from everything else that you're like, what's that? You know what I what, mean? What What is that? What is that? There's a fly on this window. Yeah. It's 
and doing a little dark highlight on some of the, or dark highlight dark shadow line on some of these small ones helps too but again i'm not outlining the whole thing a dark highlight so you see how these feel a little bit more popping off the page yes. than these ones. And again, I want to like acknowledge that you don't have to do this super dark shadow on every single one of them. And maybe even some really tiny ones just using the dark. This one I'm doing a little bit like it's moving, you know? What do we call it? A shimmy? Shimmying. Shim <laughs> a shimmy drop, not shimmy a rain drop. drop. We got the rain drop, shimmy drop. When they drop an album to rain falls. See, there's, there's so many little puns in there. <laughs> if they're rap rain drops, they like to be called baby rain because they make it rain. <laughs> I feel like I need to put more small raindrops in here and a little up here. So again, you can use a medium or dark value. Sometimes I like to do just drops, little dots too. And sometimes on these small ones, I'll, I'll like smear the value a little bit, the medium value, just a bit, not a ton. I'm actually going to create another big one right here. I don't know why, but this area, I feel like these are all very similar in size. And my eye kind of keeps catching it. So let's, let's create a big one. And then we're going to let that dry and come back to it and do our very last step, which is finishing details. And that's essentially where we let our eyes rest from the painting for a minute and then come back to it with fresh eyes and fresh, per fresh perspective and say, okay, well, first of all, congratulations, because these do look like water drops. And then second of all, what ones can I just, do I need to just put a little extra shadow on or shape a little bit better or add or take away kind of thing. So let this dry and then we'll finish it up. 
Okay, so now we're on our very last step, which is finishing details. So I hope that you guys just took a second to step away from your painting and was able to come back to it with fresh eyes so you can see things from a new perspective because sometimes when you're like in it and painting it, you can't actually see what's happening. And it's a great idea just to take a step back in general to look at something compositionally. So when I step back, I noticed a few things. One, I got a lot of these little guys going on here. Um, I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I think that if I was feeling a little bit more brave, I would actually try and blend some of them out and soften some of them just a little bit so it doesn't feel so, um, they feel very patterned to me. Mm. Like there's a little bit too much, but of course, you know, raindrops on a window or in a, on a windshield changes a lot. And I'm sure that there is a windshield or window that looks like this. So I could just be overcritical of myself. Um, and then I'm going to go in with my two and just on some of these, especially on some of these areas where I kind of lifted for the highlight, I need to, I need to kind of go back and address those. So just putting kind of a dark value blending out. So there's that value transition and then the shadow underneath. And I even feel like on some of these larger raindrops, I could go even a little bit darker on some of these shadows. There we go. And if you need to use your kind of dark value shadow to shape your raindrops to kind of like either soften the curve I think what I mean when I say like the lots of little and the big I think I just figured out what it is that's bothering me. I don't think it's the amount of little. I think it's the fact that I have big and I have small and I don't have a lot in between. Mm. I don't have a lot of medium sized raindrops. You see what I'm saying? Yes. I think that is actually what's throwing my eye more than the amount. So what we could do is maybe we can throw in a couple like medium sized ones. And just see, I needed to lift out the bottom. So there's a medium size one, but that's still a little bit on the larger side. So what if I like, I wonder if I can combine a couple small ones to make it medium. Maybe I'll turn this one into a medium. And this one. Already that feels better to me. Yeah, it does. Just having that medium wow. one in there. And I feel like I'm gonna do a medium one over here. So you can, if there's enough space, maybe you can just create one in a space or kind of like work off of one that already exists. Maybe there's some clumpy little ones that just need to become one. Yeah, just connect them. It's called networking. <laughs> it's called making friends, look yeah. it up. <laughs> look it up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 
already that just feels and I'm going to make a medium one over here This one actually should probably have a green. Mm. Oh, that still may be a little bit too big. Man, I'm having a really hard time getting it this medium size. It just grows so quickly. <laughs> no, I'm like, bigger, bigger. I'm like, dang it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's actually what it looks like when it rains. They're they like, just that's keep the collecting. <laughs> water drop in the world. Today we're actually painting a lake. As the, as the <laughs> <laughs> I just connect them all and figure it all out. Oh, it's a lake. <laughs> I do actually like it though. Like I love it when you can tell when it's raining through the windshield or whatever, how like sometimes it does rain like these huge heavy drops. And sometimes it's like a soft little mist, you know? And, uh, this is a, this is a big boy. This is a big boy rain. Which one do you like better? Like a really heavy, like the big drop rains. Or like a mist where you can walk through it and be like, I'm not actually getting wet. And then you get back to your house and you're like, I'm drenched. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's so thin, you don't believe it's raining. I love the power of the big ones. So whether I'm in it or watching it, like hearing it sound mm -hmm. against the window, you're just like, dang, like driving in a car or just like you hear it. We have kind of like a, a porch, um, uh, overhang on our porch that makes a specific sound when water hits it, you yeah. know? And so when it's heavy, it's just like so loud, but beautiful. And when you're in it, my girls love it when it rains like that. Cause they're like, please, can we go play in the rain? And I'm like, sure. And they're just drenched, but they're having the best time. You know, the mist, I almost feel like it's a trick and I don't like it. Right. <laughs> you right. know, this is a secret movie yeah. that I'm lost I just wanna, in. Like do this. To stop it from like, go away. I'm like what? It's like those. I used to. I used I to would stick block my myself from you. You know the the vegetable misters at Walmart and stuff. And yes. The, I used to stick my head in there because I was like, ah, oh. because that's my favorite. I just love the mist. Do you like the mist? Yeah, I love that it so favorite? much. Yeah. You like soggy cereal and you yep. like misty rain, Keenan. Who are you? I don't know how those are related. <laughs> they're different from me. That's how they're okay. related. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so hard to relate them. <laughs> You're like, what do they have to do with each other? I don't they're put both water wrong, in my cereal. The wrong answer. <laughs> they're wrong. They're wrong because they're different from what I like. <laughs> uh, all right. Sorry. We just had our own little fun moment there. Yeah, nice. I'm painting a picture. I'm at work right now. <laughs> I'm working. Okay. I think that feels pretty good. And there's nothing wrong with like stepping back from it a couple of times. I know that we did that in our last step for this, um, for that break. But if you need to do it a couple of times to make sure that you're getting really what you're looking for, then do it as many times as you, as you need. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm just going to darken just do a couple heavier um, values, just on a couple of them. Really make them pop. Yeah, cool. All right, there is our fall raindrops project. Wow. And of course, you'll probably discover some areas where you're like, oh, I never actually finished that raindrop, but that's okay. Mm. That happens to me all the time, actually.
Oh, I, oh, I got a little bit of bleeding. Oh. Look at that. That's, that's a rare. That's very rare. That's that 20, that's that 23rd time out of 25. Yes. A little bit of a bleed, but that's okay. Whenever that happens, I kind of just go, you know what, paint? You really want it to be there. And yeah. who am I to stop you? Exactly. Who do I think I am to stop you from going where you need to go? Right. Cool. And this nice. is especially one of those that like take a picture of it and look at it from your camera or look at it from a look at it from across the room and it'll be like, oh dang. <laughs> oh dang. Those are some water drops. <laughs> Okay, um, I hope that you guys had fun with this painting. I know it was a little bit more difficult and advanced than what we're used to, but I uh, applaud you for trying something. I applaud you for going for it. And whether or not it was a success or not is not the point. The point is that you took time to sit down, you did something that was a little bit harder than maybe what you would usually do, and you tried it. And no matter the outcome, you gave that time to yourself and you learned something, whether it was I'm not ready yet to do these paintings, or maybe it was, oh, I have a better understanding of value changes, or I learned that maybe when I'm looking at water, it's just a mirror image of it reflected, that kind of thing. So regardless of where you are or what happened, um, think about what it was that you learned and celebrate yourself for that, for that learning and that progress. It's hard because when we learn something, it's not always like this where we're every painting session we get better. That's not how it feels. It really is more like this. But when you zoom out and you look at the months over the days, there is improvement. And it's just about consistency and having that creative practice. That's where you're gonna see improvement over time. Um, and so you just have to remember to enjoy painting the little in the little moments. And then when you know, um, when you step out, you'll see you'll see the improvement kind of thing. So it takes patience, but I know that you guys can do it. And painting is just a skill that comes with time. So I got faith in you. Okay, um, if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at letsmakeart.com. If you wanna share your work, we would love to see it no matter what it looks like. Um, you can tag us at let's go make art or hashtag let's make art or hashtag let's make art watercolor. We have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor, which is the perfect place to share your work because it's a community of artists who are somewhere on their journey. Some are just starting, some have been there for a while. And it's encouraging because you're kind of on this journey together. It's a very supportive community. So go ahead and join that. Let's Make Art Watercolor on Facebook. And Keenan, always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.